there a micro white cough in the making right now? And if so, the craziest part of it has not happened just yet. And in only 12 hours, we will have an answer to a question the entire financial world is waiting on. Will it go quietly into the night? Or will it smack us across our cheeks like a wife who found her husband messaging e-girls on OnlyFans? I'm your host, Franklin Fingerblast. And today is the eve of one of the biggest answers to one of our biggest questions uh, in the financial world in general. So we're going to be spending a lot of time talking about that. Uh, yesterday we spent, the whole video was just basically on how this uh, has been building and what the issue is. And then uh, kind of left everyone to their own conclusions on to, will it affect us here in crypto? I mean, it already has. I guess that question's already answered. But will it continue to? And what can we expect for the rest of this month? Make sure that like, subscribe. Turn these misses absolutely time-sensitive alerts. And as well, if you're interested in staking your Cardano with our pool with only a 2% margin, the lower the margin, the better for you. Actually, the pool is now minting blocks. Absolutely huge after only about, I think, 10 days since it was created. So very big milestone there. And as well, we are going to be talking about actually some prices today because we have not for like the last few videos. So uh, yeah, without any further magoo, let's get dumped on. Wow, so this is very big. And um, a lot of people who are, I, I think, naive to everything just think the the two worst case scenarios are obviously there's about you know 300 billion outstanding debt from just one company the second largest property developer in china just one right evergrande although we're already seeing there's actually more than that and this potentially is a bigger issue again which is what the entire video yesterday was about but there's also uh, quite a few other things that is that are happening in the financial landscape right now it's not just evergrande has a big boo-boo and did some no-nos and this might affect crypto and then cryptos going straight to the moon those are not the only two factors here because i watch uh i do watch some people on youtube and 99 percent of them are either only bearish all the time or only bullish all the time and i love to be bullish don't get me wrong but if something comes up that could potentially affect crypto i would be absolutely insane if i wouldn't talk about it literally half the channels on youtube uh, there could be an asteroid heading towards earth and uh you would see their their video pop up uh, saying, you know, asteroid imminent, uh, why this is good for Bitcoin. And I'm not even joking. I genuinely believe that would be the case. It would kind of be funny as well, because it's not like we could do anything uh, if we were going to blow up from an asteroid to begin with, I guess. But anyway, the point here is uh, there are a lot of other things going on besides just crypto in a very bullish space. If we would look at crypto only in a vacuum, because crypto in itself is in a very bullish place, even though we had Gary Gensler come out just about an hour or so ago. And it's pretty, it looks like he pretty much wants to regulate pretty heavily. So that's one thing. But uh, Evergrande is the other thing. There are more than just crypto and Evergrande. There's a lot of things going on. So one, obviously, I don't really care to spend too much time talking about, but we still have a virus going around, the Delta, all that kind of stuff. So that's one thing. And, you know, whatever your opinion on it is, it does affect businesses being open and stuff like that, right? So it affects a lot of things. And another huge thing here is the Fed tapering talk. So this is something I'm sure you've also been he hearing about, but Fed's potentially winding down these accommodations that have been propping up these markets, okay, for like the last two years. So it's not like uh, the market didn't get any help and it was just doing really good on its own. The market was propped up, okay? So uh, if, we st if we start tapering, is that going to have a negative effect? A lot of people would say, uh, for crypto, yes. As well, the debt ceiling here. Uh, Janet Yellen is urging Congress to raise or suspend the nation's debt ceiling or risk widespread economic catastrophe. Again, this has nothing to do with China. So this is another thing on top of the already other three things that we've been talking about. Okay, and there's more. And before we go on, I just want to say, you know, before you start calling me a FUD boy or whatever, uh, you have to realize some of the people that leave comments that actually do get decent upvotes on those comments literally uh, probably don't even know which end of a toothbrush goes in their mouth, right? Uh, there are some very, how do I say this, uh, big ding-dongs that are allowed to comment on the internet because, you know, anyone can have an internet subscription, right? Anyone can pay for the internet. You just have to be very careful of the people that will spread certain things. I'm not a genius. A guy on Reddit is not a genius. Even people that are billionaires are not necessarily geniuses either but i can assure you that the people that criticize and start arguments and conspiracy theories in the comment sections are usually not the smartest bag of beans uh, in the bunch not to mention september is historically not a great month for both bitcoin and stocks okay so that's another thing piled on top of this we have still over a week left of this month seasonally september has been one of the worst months for stocks and investors think the market might behave true to that pattern 
Okay, and a lot of people even knew that going into this month for Bitcoin. So this is not something everyone only started saying last week. This is something everyone was talking about before September even came. So again, more uh, kind of just, you know, that was like the fourth or fifth thing piled on here. A correction is due as well, considering that uh, the S&P has recorded more than 200 sessions without having a drawdown of 5% or more. Okay, usually there's multiple 5 and 10% pullbacks. Um, I believe like every year for the S&P and we've we've gone well beyond all of that. Obviously, we've we've mentioned that before. The S&P's bounced at like the 50-day moving average immediately every time this year and then gone on to set new all-time highs by like the following week. So, it, there is a correction that's due. This has been very very bullish. And if we look kind of just at the entire world, is this warranted? Absolutely not. Myself and anyone, everyone has been, well, anyone with common sense has been saying that for a long time. Like we're being propped up right now. So we have to realize that. So we have all of these other things happening. Is the debt ceiling going to be suspended? Uh, we also have to consider tapering. Uh, we also have to consider the fact that we have not had a correction in a long time. And the fact that on top of all of this, uh, property developers in China are not looking too good. Their GDP is heavily based on real estate. Basically, if you're Chinese, you buy real estate. That's just what you do. It's completely different from the US in that sense. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of money going to ghost cities into projects that don't even exist because they're basically running a Ponzi scheme when it comes to real estate. And that's not good, obviously. Now, before we even continue here, is this a Lehman Brothers moment? Not necessarily. I mean, it's not the exact setup to Lehman Brothers and how it collapsed. Uh, Lehman Brothers was related to real estate. Basically, Lehman Brothers was just the b first big guy to go down. Lehman Brothers didn't necessarily cause this. There was there was issues and issues. Uh, Lehman Brothers going bankrupt then was kind of just a moment where it was like, oh goodness, this is all bad. And then it just kind of uh, made everything snowball very, very, very fast. So this is not necessarily the same setup as a Lehman Brothers situation, but it doesn't have to be to get bad. That's what blows my mind. People look at this and they're like, well, you know, this isn't quite as bad as Lehman, no issues things could still be different and not as bad as Lehman and still affect everything. So I think people look at this like very black and white, like Lehman had what, like $600 billion of debt and, and this uh, Evergrande has like 300 billion. We have to keep in mind, do we believe all of the numbers coming out of China? Okay. I think any reasonable person would say uh, that they don't believe the numbers coming out of China because I mean, they lie pretty much about everything to look better. Uh, and inflation lingering as well. Uh, data recently showed that the cost of living for Americans rose in August at the slowest pace in seven, seven months and signaled the surge in inflation this year may have peaked. And consumer prices have risen this year at the fastest pace in three decades, okay? So we have so many things going on. That's why, that's why it blows my mind. You, you cannot just look at one single thing and decide this is what's going to happen. There are literally dozens, even more than what's, what I'm gonna be talking about in this video, dozens of other things, things probably we don't even know about that could factor this in. So anybody that's extremely confident they know what's going to happen probably should not be listened to. If you're listening to anybody and they're telling you this is what, exactly what will happen, whether it is really bullish or really bearish, you probably shouldn't believe it, okay? It's very similar to like the Dunning-Kruger effect where if you know nothing, you know like there's nothing, and then you know a little bit and you think, wow, I know everything. And then the more you know, the more you realize, wow, I actually don't know as much as I thought. So people that know nothing, obviously they know nothing, but then you get a little knowledge and they think, wow, this is all a piece of cake, which is like 99% of crypto investors. And then the more you actually start learning, the more you realize, wow, there's a lot of other things that complicate this. I do not know. And then if you're an expert, you're pretty much like 50-50 on it. Like, yeah, I know a lot about this. And the more you know, the more indecisive it gets. And then people will criticize that. But all of that to say, if a cartoon Twitter account or a cartoon YouTube comment tells you what's going to happen, Eh, you can you can place a pretty big bet that they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. And all of this with the very big mentality of buy the dip. Investors have grown accustomed to buying market downturns, referring to them as dips. However, on Monday, uh, after trading over the past week, suggests investors are becoming more reluctant to purchase beaten down stocks with expectations stock values will resume. Uh, so people are getting a little shaky here. And so I want to actually transition in in about 12 hours, the Chinese market opened. So for the past two days, Chinese markets have been closed. I believe Hong Kong markets were open yesterday. They were closed on Monday, but Chinese markets, which is very big, were closed the last two days and they will open uh, in a few hours, about uh, about like nine or 10 hours from now. By the time this video gets uploaded, probably like seven or eight hours. So even so roughly about like 9.30 p.m. tonight. So uh, it's pretty important here. And I love this comment, one of the top comments on this Reddit. It cracks me up how confident people are about Evergrande being nothing right now. But those same people will absolutely poop their pants when Elon Musk says something or tweets something. So uh, people don't seem to be worried about this whole situation. And I think there's only one reason why they're not worried. And it's because they have absolutely no idea what is actually happening. Again, 
this chart right here. The less you know, the more confident you are. I saw last night a YouTuber with like four or 500,000 subs who was very, very bullish on Bitcoin, um, who didn't even know Evergrande. Like he, he didn't even remember the name of it. He, he basically did not care about it. It just blows my mind. Like how are you gonna be looking at stocks or finance, crypto, all of it, and not even like read the news outside of crypto. It's just, uh, I feel like it's extremely irresponsible. And with that being said, uh, yeah, I mean, this is something interesting as well. So this kind of looks like a mini baby uh, whack off accumulation pattern. We see obviously there is a initial nice little rally to the upside. There is a pullback here. And then we go on for another rally here. Okay. And then set more new highs, same here. And then, uh, you know, you see it kind of tapering off a little bit, getting weaker and weaker. And it was right here around four and then a really quick drop like we saw here really quick drop but then we do see a bounce here just like we're seeing here but then continue downside and if this pattern actually were to fully complete yet again the pattern would not be over like it's not too late if this pattern would fully complete it actually would bring us down to about like the 36 37 thousand dollar range and keep in mind a lot of these targets do sometimes get overshot so could there be even a wick even lower than that now i am not saying that's going to happen okay uh, do not put a lot of faith on the exact patterns repeating. However, this is more than worth mentioning considering how similar this is to the exact Wyk Wyckoff schematic that everyone was talking about a few months ago. And um, I think I maybe saw, like, I, I tweeted about this earlier, and I think I maybe saw, I'm sure there are people that have been talking about it for the last few days. In fact, I think the guy who pointed out the initial Wyckoff is talking about it again as well. So with that being said, if that is going to repeat, then we are going to go lower. And um, like the, the on-chain analysts on Twitter, uh, they've put their bottom, basically, their floor at about 39,000. And this would obviously invalidate that if this com would come to play. So with that being said, I did not do a lot of TA or any TA in yesterday's video because this is so based on things outside of crypto. And so again, I absolutely will be buying the dip. I feel kind of like one of the YouTube commenters being like, uh, you're only ever bullish, right? I'm starting to also get kind of uh, fed up with it because you're allowed to allowed to be a little bearish if something shows up imagine if something horrible showed up on the charts which i'm not saying it has imagine if something like that did show up and then i just said nope couldn't be the case and then i just pretended like that didn't happen that would be uh extremely irresponsible for somebody that uh has a platform and um yeah i think a lot of people are just afraid of it but to be honest i don't really care too much at this point if we enter a bull or a bear market uh so be it i'll be buying if we enter a bear market and i will be taking some profits on the way up if we continue and just absolutely explode which i do think we still will hit six digits at some point here it might actually push this out a little bit out into 2022 if we start seeing what I think might happen, especially in the broader financial markets. So either way, uh, crypto is my big bet, even though we also see the SEC and, and other regulation most likely on the horizon here. Obviously, we see that increasing here. Will it potentially uh, get even crazier if the markets collapse? Could they use crypto as kind of like a straw man and pretty much try to F that? Uh, in anger out of the the market not doing well who knows again it's a scenario you have to consider and if i say these things and they upset you that's fine but at the very least you have to entertain these ideas because anything can happen and uh it's su such a simple concept but uh people uh, people are absolutely trained to not do that which i think is why like 90 percent of people get wrecked absolutely which if you guys are new channel make sure to like subscribe to your news because missy's absolute time sensitive alerts as well if you want to join our ada staking pool very big we are up and running now after again about like 10 or 11 days uh we are now minting which is absolutely huge and big for us because this is a brand new pool and it's the first time this has happened so yeah only a two percent margin which is not your reward average uh, average apy is about five percent roughly uh and the benefits of staking with a single pool operator are that you own your keys instead of staking on an exchange and uh, obviously also the margin is lower with our pool than any other pool that i've seen on youtube most of them are three four five percent margin which is worse for you uh the lower it is the better but without any further ado that's it for me Thank <laughs> you.